Hi, I'm Debbie Kitterman. And I'm Brandy Kitterman. And we are here to equip you and challenge you to, to dare, dare to hear, hear the voice of God. God. And on today's episode, we have the bingo, bingo wheel, wheel out again. And we are hoping that we've perfected it so the balls don't go rolling everywhere. So are you ready to roll the wheel? Yeah, we'll see. Okay. This should be fun. I'll get ready to catch it just in oh. case. Oh, there's one already. Perfect. Yay. And this one is I-16. And um, I-16 is how um, how do you understand dreams and how God speaks through them? This is Jenny Ooh. from Texas. Okay. Ooh, Jenny from Texas. I love dreams. So we're going to talk about dreams today and how that we understand God speaks in dreams. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, first of all, we need to understand that God speaks in a variety of ways. Yes. And dreams is one of those. And it's very biblical, and you're going to find it in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And God gives dreams for a variety of reasons. And mm -hmm. I go really in-depth with this in my um book releasing God's heart through hearing his voice and it's part of this training in fact I do many dream workshops with it as well um, and so we're gonna try to tackle as much as we can in yeah. this short bit of time for you Jenny from Texas but what do you want to say because I I feel like you're ready to just jump right in there because you're like I love dreams I so. do I love dreams I think <laughs> you said once as a joke that dreams are the only way only time that God really got to talk to you because it was the only time you shut up yes <laughs> her words I, not mine okay? I actually did that I actually did say that <laughs> but I I kind of feel like um I use dreams as confirmation of this is kind of like this is the dreams are the point in time in which my body is asleep and so it is mostly just my spirit communicating with God it's it's super clear um and so i like to use dreams as confirmation um of something that i feel like he's already told me which generally is how it works but i love dreams because there's no end to the creativity that happens within our minds um and so that's really fun just kind of diving into this new world with god and whatever he wants to show you is what you get um and then interpreting dreams is also very fun because they're relative to each person uh, and i think that's what makes them like really special like you and i could have literally the exact same dream and they could mean completely opposite things yeah um because the people in the dreams mean different things to us right um i so first let's start with this are dreams from god absolutely but dreams can come from other sources as well yes. so um scripture is clear about this that um in in job it's like we can cause ourselves to dream dreams right so dreams can come from the weird pizza or the anchovies which i would never Gross. eat those but people talk about that just, so just don't eat them don't eat them um <laughs> so um dreams the sources of dreams can come from god can come from the enemy or can come from ourselves yeah and so we have to discern and ask is this a god-given dream or is this a dream where my emotions are trying to work out an issue and i can't handle it during the day so myself is causing myself to dream dreams or is the enemy giving me a dream right to maybe torment me or taunt me or to lead me astray and usually there's a signature mark for when the enemy comes in um, to do that and I usually tell people like if they're like I don't know I would say we'll start as if it's a God-given dream because if you're a believer and you have submitted your imagination and your mind to God and you are fully armored up with the armor of God the helmet of salvation is placed then God is going to use the avenue of dreams to speak to you and it's mm -hmm. a scientific fact that we all dream yes so if you say you don't dream that's just not true you just no. are not remembering mm -hmm. it and maybe you're not remembering it because you didn't know that was actually an avenue that God could speak through you but it is a scientific fact that when we hit REM that we do dream now I did say this so I am a vivid dreamer I dream in color not everybody dreams in color okay mm -hmm. so some people just dream in black and white and mine are more like movies that unfold like it's this long saga of this movie that unfolds and um when I was teaching on dreams one time I I said dreams are the main way that God speaks to me because it's the only time that my mouth is shut and it's the only time I'm silent. And and as I'm teaching it, I heard the Lord say, Oh, oh really? really? <laughs> and, I love uh, that. <laughs> I know. And and I was like, 
uh oh, I think I'm in trouble. But I didn't understand what that really meant until I went through a season of almost an entire year and I didn't have any dreams. And, and so then I had to learn how to develop my language with the Lord and my relationship with the Lord to a whole nother level um, because I love dreams. I just love that there's so many layers to dreams and there's so much to it because a lot of times some dreams are literal and you don't need to interpret them. It's like they you dream them and they happen. But that's not for everybody. Right. A lot of times you have to apply symbolism to your dreams. Yeah. And I think, Jenny, that's what you're asking about is, okay, does God give us dreams? Yes, absolutely. But how do we understand them? And so what you have to do is you have to begin to develop your language with God. And one of the things yep. that Brandy said is if she has a dream and I have a dream and they're almost identical dreams, that the symbolism in the dream is going to mean something different to Brandy than it is for me. Yep. And um, because like, like take your dad, for instance. I was just thinking that. Right. That's my dad. That's your spouse. Yes. It's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same because we're going to talk about dogs. Right. So if I have a dream and it's got a dog in it and your dad has a dream and it has a dog in it, to me, a dog is my companion, my loyal friend. It's just that I get so much comfort from being with a mm -hmm. dog. Like, I love them, but he does not so much love them. He tolerates them because we love them. He thinks and he tolerates them. Yeah, but he, he loves of, them. He does have a soft place in his heart. <laughs> but, but he would always say, what would your dad say? Dogs are? Uh, does he, he say demons? Yes. Because it's scripturally, right? Because scripturally, cause yeah. scripturally, if you go to scripture, scriptures um, often depicted um, dogs as demonic or evil spirits. And it is scriptural. But also, um, and depending on the country that you live in, depends on what that is. And so I always say right. to people, symbolism books are good for you because if you have no basis or it's not found in scripture or you cannot seem to um, put your sleuth hat on and work out what a symbol means, then it gives you a good starting point for that now there are some things yeah. that are universal like numbers and colors the bible is very specific about what certain numbers mean what certain colors mean and so those things are there but other symbols like bees like what does a bee mean or what does a beaver mean or mm. what does a peacock mean or what does a what does a dog mean it's where you have to start asking yourself questions yeah. and so i have a symbolism guide that um has exercises where you begin to articulate what certain things mean to you and then you journal it and keep track of it yeah. in this symbolism guide because once you start to label something god will use the same symbolism language for you yes now these things can also change um as you develop relationships with people so like say you have a dream with somebody and they mean one thing because you haven't known them for very long and right. they mean something totally different and then once you get into a relationship with them or just over time honestly um that can shift that happened to me with a friend um what he meant to me in my dream at the beginning was completely different than what he means to me in a dream now right yeah, because relationships evolve, relationships change, mm -hmm. and things happen. And that's the th important thing is you need to remember that when you're dreaming about individuals, it's not necessarily the individual or that this thing is going right. to happen with this individual. It's what they represent to you. And so when people share their dreams with me and say, oh, I dreamt about my son or my daughter, then I'm often going to say, well, what character traits or what things do your sons or daughters represent to you? So for me... Um, it's it's things um, our children can be aspects of our ministries things that God has called us to right because there are babies there are infant and and so when you look at that symbolically they can be aspects of our ministry and so for me when I would dream about Brandy Brandy was the aspect of my prophetic ministry um, because she was flowing and moving in the prophetic at a young age now when I would dream about my son Jesse I would dream about him and it was talking about the leadership aspect of my ministry mm -hmm. and so I would look at those things it wasn't necessarily that these things were happening to Brandy or um, that this was Brandy in my dream but it was what she represented and it was right. character traits and qualities that she could have and one one story that I share a lot is when I was um, working in the worship arts department at a very large church and we were at a conference and um, I was there and uh, my boss was leading worship and so uh, she came to me one morning she's like oh my gosh so and so had a dream about me and it was a snake that was wrapped all around me and it was like 
suffocating me and mm. choking me. And what am I supposed to do with that? I'm supposed to go on and lead worship here in just a minute. And I just said, okay, calm down. Take a deep breath. And so she's like, okay, what? And I said, it's not you. She goes, what do you mean it's not me? She dreamed about me and a snake wrapped around me. And I said, right. I said, she dreamed about you. You didn't dream about you having a snake wrapped around you. And she's like, no, it was this other person. And I said, okay, well, what would you represent to this other person? And she was like, uh, worship? And I said, probably. I said, do you have a close relationship with them? Is there an intimate connection other than you're just the worship leader? Um, and she's like, no. And I said, okay, so let's just assume that you represent worship to this person. So God was probably talking to this person about something in her life that was choking off or suffocating the worship and her mm. relationship with God. And she was like, oh, it's not me. Okay, I can go do this. And so what we have to understand is that right. is that when God gives us a dream, we need to pray into these things. Mm -hmm. We need to ask him yeah. for revelation. We don't need to go running to the person and saying, I had a dream where the snake was wrapped around you and it was killing you because that's not doing any good for anyone. Right. And so we have to, we have to um, ask God to be... Um, clear with where we're at so that we're not going and harming other people with the things that we get in our dreams and I don't know my poor husband I, and I know you're you're not married yet Brandy but I'm not John gets in trouble for things that happen in my dream sometimes and he's like oh my gosh what did you dream last night you know it wasn't me I know but the emotions were so real and I don't know if you've ever experienced that maybe it's a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a friend and you wake up from this dream and you're like ah and you really feel like it's happening, you have to actually go back and look at what was going on and what it represents right. and things. And so mm -hmm. we've learned over the years that when that happens, even though I may come out of it, I'm like, ah, and he's like, well, okay, what did you dream about last night? <laughs> um, but now some of you may be going, well, how is this really scriptural? Jesus, Jesus spoke in parables, right? He spoke in symbolism all the time. Mm -hmm. He spoke in parables all throughout the New Testament. And why did he do it? He said, because the kingdom, the treasures of the kingdom are hidden for such as you that will dig for them. I mean, I wish that God would just spell it out in a dream. But what he right. wants is he wants to take us to another level in our relationship yeah. with them. He wants us to ask him questions. He wants us to search. He wants us to dig. He wants us to go in. And he wants, he wants us to dive deeper into the things that he's speaking to us. Mm -hmm. But we also see that in the... Um, Old Testament and New Testament that God would give dreams. Now, he would give very specific dreams, like he gave dream to Jesus' father, Joseph. Get up and take Jesus and go to Egypt now because they're going right. to come kill you, right? And so there were dreams like that, and there were dreams of promotion where God um, came and he inquired of Solomon's heart and then gave him a promotion um, because he was asking for wisdom. God gave him not just wisdom, but riches as well and so we need to um, understand that there are different types of dreams that God will give us dreams of promotion and dreams of confirmation and prophetic dreams and dreams of strategy and he can heal us in dreams I know of people that have received healing um, because of dreams um, God can give us a commission and a calling in dreams um, the possibilities with God are endless Right. when it comes to these things. And I like to say to people that are like, well, dreams can't be from God. The new age is moving in that. And what I always say is, mm -hmm. is that the ways and the variety of ways God speaks is like, um, is like a wheel with a hub, right? So you have the hub of the wheel, and if that's Jesus, and then you have all the different ways that God speaks, and we're out, out here as the outer wheel, and you have Jesus as the hub, and then you have the outer wheel, the ways that God speaks are all the different spokes that come off of that, right? And that God can speak in a variety of ways to us. And if we start picking and choosing which ways God wants to speak to us and we're pulling out spokes, then we are actually shrinking and weakening the wheel that's mm. attached to Jesus. Wow. And so we have to go to the Word of God. Like, is it in the Word of God? Like, if you're questioning, are dreams really from God? Go to the Word of God. You're going to see dreams from Genesis to Revelation. Yeah. You're going to see them all throughout mm -hmm. Scripture. And so that's where we go to. That's what we do. And dreams are real. And God really speaks in dreams. And I've known people, missionaries, where God has given them dreams that is like, get up and leave now because your life is in danger. Right. So we need to learn to pay attention to them. But we also need to learn how to... Um, 
figure out what God is saying. So we need to figure out how to put on our detective sleuth hat and dig in there. And um, there's no formula. There is no formula. It is you spending time with Holy Spirit, you spending time with God, labeling things, and then praying over, and then God will just give you the interpretation. Yeah. Because when he gives you a dream, there's always a prophetic word or a prophetic statement or a thing that he gives you from that dream right. that he wants you to take right, action right. on. Can we go over a few basics like um, water, cars, bicycles, sure, 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 sure. things like that that are like kind Symbolism. of... Symbolism? Yeah, general, okay. uh, this happens in a dream all the time kind okay. of things are like... Right, okay, so, generally. so like a car is our mm-hmm. ministry or our life in motion. Yes. Our house is our life, and so we look at what room we're in. If we're in the living room, that's our life currently, where we're at, where we're living right now. If we're in the bedroom, a bedroom can be a place of intimacy or a place of rest. If you're in the bathroom, the bathroom is a place of pl- of cleansing and purging. Also, it's for me, God speaks to me a lot in the shower. Right. Right? That's, I mean, I get some of my most God moments in the shower. And I'm like, why are you speaking to me now? I don't have anything to write, <laughs> write it down on. Um, babies um, or being pregnant is yeah. like God is wanting to birth something through you, like mm-hmm. a ministry. Or you look at how old that the um, the child is, and that's kind of how old the ministry is. Mm-hmm. Or if it's not your child or it's, it's one that you've adopted or somebody's caring, it's somebody else's ministry that God is entrusting to you. Yeah to care for and then when you look at the vehicle too you look at the different types of vehicle right so if it's just a car it's just like your ministry or life in motion but like what if you're driving a school bus then your ministry has the ability to bring other people on board Mm. okay oh that's cool i didn't actually know that now if it's a bicycle you're kind of doing things in your own strength because you're pedaling it but if it's a motorcycle it's a ministry that maybe only you and one other person can be on depending on the type of motorcycle but it is powered by the spirit Right. Mm-hmm. Um, water represents the Holy Spirit. Um, colors are very important as well. Purple is royalty. Um, but there's positive and negatives to everything, positive and negatives right. to the colors as well. And so you can find um, symbolism books that will talk about that and numbers. Um, number seven is God's perfect number. It's p- completion. Number eight is new beginnings. So there's mm-hmm. all kinds of symbolism that you can begin to talk with God about. And so this is if you have a symbol symbol in your dream, then what you need to do is ask God, um, what does this represent? Ask yourself, what does this represent to me? And is it there's some place in the Bible that I can go to that I see this if it doesn't mean something specific to me? Um, and because bees can represent um stinging gossip stinging words Mm. right but for somebody like my dad who is deathly allergic to bees it means death so what a dream for him like if i were to say okay well the bible says this about what bees are now there's also bees and honey right which is a sustenance and stuff so we have to ask ourselves the question what do these things mean to us and people what do they mean to me what character trait quality what thing do i think of when i think of them our husbands our spouses covenant relationship things we're committed to Mm-hmm. All of these things are important. So hopefully that gives you a, a jumping Wait, off. Wait, before you go, uh, siblings and parents too. Oh, siblings and parents. Okay. So um, so parents like fathers mm-hmm. represent can represent Father God if you have a good you, relationship, yeah. right? Um, mothers can represent the Holy Spirit. Grandmothers, the extra special side. Now this is if you have... Oh, a, I didn't know that. If you have, if you have a good relationship with them. Okay. Um, siblings represent our relationship with Jesus yes. because we're brothers yeah. and sisters in Christ and friends. Um, again, this, and and let me say this. I, I want to go back to the vehicles. If you are not driving the vehicle, then somebody that is representing one of the Trinity, Father, Son, or Holy Spirit, needs to be driving that vehicle, somebody that represents that. Because if they're not, then whatever that person is that's driving your vehicle is driving your life. It could be fear. It could be unbelief. Mm-hmm. It could be sin. It could be something. So you need to make sure if you're not driving the vehicle that it is somebody who represents the Father, Son, or Holy Spirit. And if not, God is showing you that something else is driving your life that's not of a spiritual nature of God. Yeah. So, okay. 
Did okay. we get that all in? I think, in the amount I think of time? that's good. I think we yeah. went a little bit over our time. So it's okay. I um, thank you for listening to Dare to Hear the Podcast, where we encourage you to dare to hear the voice of God. I'm Debbie Kitterman. And I am Brandy Kitterman. And if you guys were encouraged in any way, we'd love if you would share with your friends. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found, just go ahead and leave us a review and subscribe uh, so that you can know when we post next, which should be every week, every Wednesday. Um, if you are watching our beautiful faces on YouTube, yes. then go ahead and subscribe. Hit the bell icon so that it tells you whenever they go live. We go live. And then uh, leave us a comment down below and hit the thumbs up button. Yes. Well, we have enjoyed this episode. Thank you, Jenny, from Texas for your yes. question. And again, please, if you have questions, we invite you to send those mm-hmm. to us via email at info at dare, the number two, here.com because we want to give you and equip you in exactly what you need. So thank you for joining us and we will see you next week. Shadows